Alright guys, we are back and we are live, so uh, stay tuned, Sawn's also here again, and we are going to be talking Living Story Season 2, so stay tuned. everyone and welcome to episode number 102 of the Chronicles of Tyria podcast, a Guild Wars 2 podcast for fans, by fans. I am Lagwin, I am not on the road, I am not in my car, I am here a day earlier than normal, but that way we didn't skip out on the most important week in Guild Wars 2 in a while. Um, as you can tell by the scribbles that I'm also joined by Son, so welcome back. Hi. Sorry, you couldn't join me on my road trip. That's okay. I don't think the... I was on a road trip of my own. Mm. I don't think my my car based internet could have handled that anyway. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it would have gone down in in fire, flames, something. Yeah. Something not nice. Yeah, probably. So. Ah, uh, looks like there's a couple of people who are watching us live. Um, Yay! I'm not even going to say anything about iTunes because I'm a real big slacker, so I'm sorry, iTunes people. Although, if I say I'm sorry on iTunes now, by the time you actually hear it, it won't really make any sense. <laughs> I'm, like, behind it by, like, five episodes, so I really need to upload iTunes. It just... things have yeah. gotten away from me lately. So. Anyway, um... Yeah, so we're going to be talking, as most of you I'm sure may know at this point, the second season of The Living Story hit yesterday. Yeah. So. Oh my god, it was so awesome. Now, normally we spoil The Living Story stuff. We usually put our little disclaimer at the beginning, warning there will be spoilers, blah blah blah. But since we're doing this on Wednesday and not on Thursday, that literally only gives you one day really, to experience the content, that's not a lot of time. So we are going to discuss the Living Story updates, but we're going to do it in the most spoiler-free fashion we can. So that's the plan. Roger. All right. So first up is Mailbag. If you like... Mailbag! Is that going to be our new little jingle i'll have to go back Maybe. somebody record that snip that out <laughs> and make that a little we'll, we'll put some dubstep remix in there too it'll be good Mail called haven't you seen like children's tv yeah yeah that's exactly what it i know i mean uh, the only thing you, you're one step away from singing blues clues here's the mail it never fails which would be <laughs> awesome as well 
So anyway, mailbag. If you like the mailbag image that you see on screen, that is created by our good friend Basberg, Basberg, B-A-S-B-U-R-G, dot com, if you would like to hire him. Also, I want to work for arenanet.tumblr.com. So, uh, you should check it out. He's really, really talented, and can do pretty crazy concept art style stuff. Also, keep an eye on his Twitch channel, because sometimes he streams himself doing art live. So, most people know they seem to like speed doodles and, and drawings live, so, uh, check that out. So, uh, a lot of stuff on YouTube. Some of this I've already answered to people via um, via YouTube. I responded directly to them. But I'll, I'll take these because this was the episode that I was uh, I was in the car on my way to <laughs> Philadelphia Comic Con. We got the first thing up was first comment. <laughs> Thank you, Doug Moore. Um, Good I, job. I appreciate when people do that, but we're not big enough in my mind where, like, being the first person to comment is, like, a cool thing. Because it's not <laughs> Sometimes like... Sometimes first is only. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Uh, <laughs> it's not like we get thousands of comments where, like, being like, oh, first, that's, like, prestigious. It's not for us. But, hey, you know what? I appreciate you caring enough to do that. Alaska says obligatory squeak. I got I, I can't really go more than all right. So anyway, uh, Natus <laughs> Niel lag my man. Can't you just skip the podcast for one week? I mean, streaming in a car on your way to Comic Con. Seriously, you make me laugh too much. That was crazy. Well, it's funny because I didn't plan on skipping last week, but I skipped last week. So there you go. I guess I can skip a week. Uh, funny enough, the reason I skipped last week was one I was supposed to be out of. The, I was supposed to be out of the area for work on Thursday, like staying overnight. But I ended up coming back home. But then I didn't end up doing the podcast because I was working on costume stuff for another convention that was last weekend. So you know, I've been busy. By the way, enjoy mm -hmm. the Comic Con. Uh, Thank you. I did. It was a good time. This weekend's was better, but that's besides the point. Uh, Soya says, Commitment. Thanks, Lag, for still doing the podcast. I'm glad you guys appreciate it. And then Son says, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I'll be certain to heckle you extra next time I'm able to be on. So is this, oh, where, yeah. the, is this where the extra heckles come in? Hopefully, if I remember. Okay. Heckle, uh, heckle. Heckle. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think I have to walk off stage now. I can't handle that kind of heckling. <laughs> um, and then lastly, the ninth episode of the Lag and the Lady series that went up on Tuesday, which was yesterday. Uh, Natus Neil again, nice vid. I can see many artworks I've never seen before thanks to your video. And I would, you know, in, in filming that and doing... Every single aspect of, you know, all the Silvari personal story. It is kind of interesting. The different, like, concept art, uh, flash screens that we, or splash screens rather, that we don't normally get to see. Or pay attention to. Because I, 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 honestly, I think when normally when we're doing it, it's just all like, ah, oh, just load. Or, oh, it's loading. I can quickly, like, I don't know, drink tab, some water. Or tab something. out and look at something else. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that could be it. Um, and then, all right, next up is shoutouts. Again, lovely artwork that you see here, brought to you by the ever talented Basberg. Son, do you have any shoutouts? Um, shout out to Brahms because we did the uh, living story together yesterday. That was so much fun. All right, so shout out to Brahms. Yep. Nice to see that he's back in game and you know functional again, playing. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, and I just want to uh, a shout out to Mr. DJ Cutman, who's a fairly popular chiptune artist DJ that some of you may know. Met the guy uh, personally. Look, here's a sticker, DJ Cutman. 
little bit off to the side there, but DJ cut me out. Uh, I met the guy at Too Many Games this past weekend, and he was super awesome. Um, I sort of became his, like, photographer slash videographer uh, by, like, filming him and all of his, his label doing the, the after-party stuff. But then he was, he was just really cool, and he signed all my CDs for me, which was neat. Um, yeah, so just shout out to him. He's a cool dude. Um, shout out to you know what? Also, shout out to the angry video game nerd because he thought my proton pack looked awesome, and that <laughs> was exciting because I know he has very, very colorful adjectives for things that he does not like. I realize that it's a <laughs> character, nonetheless, but he said it was awesome, so. That was exciting. Uh, so those are my shoutouts. Yay, shoutouts. Yay. Um, Alright, next up is just sort of an announcement. Uh, we forgot to update this comic link. Oops. I think. Oh, this will probably... Let's see if this will work. You ready for this? Let's try 7. It was the 16th comic, right? No, I thought we were only on 15. I'm asking, not telling. Let's see if this... I don't know what's going on anymore. Let's see if this works. I feel like it's 16. Maybe I skipped 14. That might be why. Oh, and um, you need to add an E in JPEG. Oh, uh, that might be why. Yeah, whatever. My black and white ones are a slightly different format. Gotcha. Why? Because I'm doing it with um, Krita instead of... What I've been doing with the color ones is in order to keep them small and still be pretty, I actually make a PNG and port it over into GIMP and make the JPEG from GIMP. Gotcha. Well, uh, anyway, I liked it. So there you go. Uh, the 16th issue of the comic came out today. Um, pretty, even though it's in black and white. Would have loved to have seen it colored, but Son's got a crazy schedule, so I don't blame her for that. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll go wanna, back and color it in, in the future when I have time. Do you want to talk September. about your schedule? Sort of, or like, you know, without going too crazy, but... Yeah, um... I have a new summer job, and it pays super awesome, but it keeps me stupid busy. Uh, last week, I only worked five of the seven days that we were eligible to work because of having a long weekend. And in those five days... I only put in 63 hours. And by only, I mean, I have been told we had very few hours last week. So, yeah. I, I'm getting up at 4 a.m. and I'm coming home at like 10 p.m. Yeah. So, yeah. Yay. So, so that's the deal. That's why she, uh, Hasn't wasn't around. Yeah, Jack's Wednesday show. People just don't pay attention to my tweets. I give up. Give up, Son. With my tweets and my Facebook messages. Um. Yes, there is a Hello. a Wednesday show because uh, this Canada Day was yes yesterday. Yeah. Canada Day was yesterday, which means the Fourth of July is right around the corner. Which for America, here's a big deal. So the 4th of July is Friday, which means Americans have off that day, which means that I don't have to go to work on Friday, which means I'm going to leave tomorrow to go on vacation for the weekend. Uh, you know, just a long weekend, but I won't be around. And while I had thought about trying to do another one from the car, the service where I'm going uh, isn't that great. So there is a high probability that it wouldn't work. And I'm going to be there all weekend, and there's no internet there, so I couldn't do it on the weekend. So, Wednesday show! Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to join you on the weekend anyways. Right. So that it makes it all the better to do it today. Yeah. Um, 
But anyway, what I did want to talk about was we made uh, an adjustment to the way the Let's Lore and Lag and the Ladies are going to be released. Now, I did some research, and I, I'd been to, in the past couple weeks, a lot of self-promotion and growing your audience and all these other kinds of things. And it led me to really dive into the analytics of my of, of Chronicles of Tyria and the, the views. So what I looked at was the average viewer retention on any one of the Chronicles of Tyria videos is 9 minutes. So that's the average retention. Now, albeit that could be because like some of our most viewed videos are songs that are only like 3 minutes long. So you're going to kind of lower the scale. But I've looked at like most of the podcasts. People tune out after about a half an hour, it seems. Unless it was just like a straight lore show for hours. They would listen to like the whole thing. Uh, so what we decided to do was to break up the recordings. So now each Let's Play video is only going to be about 15 minutes long. Somewhere in the 15 to 20 minute range, depending on where's a good time to cut the video. So... This one allows us to kind of take a break, or not, as you'll see when the videos come out. <laughs> um, but potentially allows us to, to take a little bit of a breather between recordings. But it allows you to get more bite-sized content that's easier to approach, but it also means you get content more times a week. So right now, the schedule is Lag and the Ladies episodes will be releasing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Let's Lore videos will release, be releasing on Wednesdays and Fridays. So you'll be getting four videos, Let's Play videos a week, plus the uh, podcast going up on YouTube, hey. plus the comment, the comic on Wednesday. So, lots of stuff. Uh, so that's the kind of the current plan. And again, we don't, we're not married to this idea. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, it also makes editing and things a lot easier because there's only a 15 minute window to edit. I don't need to like wait forever for things to process before I can go in and see if it's all screwy. Um, <laughs> yeah, like a few times when you've uh, put the wrong starts on the wrong video. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that was on purpose so that I could see if people were actually watching the videos. Yeah, twice. I was just double checking. Uh huh. And it took a long time for us to get you to fix it. I'm busy. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> Got shit to do. Got time to <laughs> fix your damn videos. I, I do all this by myself. I need help. I need an editor. Position mm. open for free if you want to edit all the videos for free. Uh, uh anyway. So, uh, we would like feedback, though. Please, give us feedback. Positive yeah. or negative. You love this idea. You hate this idea. Why you love it. Why you hate it. Because if there's an overwhelming number of people that are like, Oh, these 15-minute videos are stupid. I hate them. Then we'll go back to the one-hour-long chunk. But because of the way it works, it gives us the ability to have extra episodes. So, like... If somebody's sick, we won't have to skip a week. We'll have leftover content that we can keep releasing so that we don't have to skip if people are out on vacation or, or what have you. So Yeah. Um, it, it's hard for us to be able to schedule all of us to do extra recordings. It just basically doesn't happen because of the fact that we're spanning so many time zones. And mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, again... Let us know. We're going to try it for this week. It was great, though, because the videos were so much shorter. I did all the editing uh, Monday night. Like, awesome. I did, we did the recording, and then all the videos were edited up and processing and ready to go. So, like, I can go on vacation this week, and I don't have to worry about videos not going up. The only thing I have to do is the podcast after we finish here. Um... Also, Jal uh, in the chat says, I'll keep to editing the website. It's enough for me. Speaking of that, we may be making some overhauls to our website. We have the new logo that you kind of see the um, the very, which is actually kind of hard to see now that I look at it because uh, of the colorations of the backgrounds. But that, you know, i got to work on the backgrounds for this. But anyway, the new updated logo that we have is still kind of in... Uh, I would say late beta form. 
it's not 100% finalized, correct? Yeah, it's um, because these are just uh, original scribbles, yeah. and so it's being done up by our buddy Grafer. Yes, and we still never really decided if we wanted to do text on the book or just leave it smudgy, you know? I don't think we ever decided. But that, that's not a conversation for here. But either way... We did decide, but yes, it's not a conversation for here. <laughs> I don't remember, son. It was a while ago. But anyway, um, <laughs> like I said, we've got the new logo, which is going to have to get uploaded to the website. I also have some contact information for people that may try to integrate the forums directly into the main Chronicles of Tyria website so you don't have to go to a separate site. Um, so we're working on doing kind of an overhaul to that. Uh, and what a perfect time for the second anniversary of the game coming out in August. But also, we may be looking and, and doing some more things with new writers. We're not exactly sure how we want to go about this. We're going to do another contest like we had in the past, but uh, we're going to be exploring options for new fan fiction writers for the sites. Um, so if that's something that would interest you, just kind of just send us an email or something now and let us know, just because we are looking into how we want to go about doing it. Um, and even to see how much interest there is out there for official fan fiction writers. So, yeah. That's some news. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, let's just get this little thing out of the way here, which is the gem store. And then we can get into the real meaty content. So. Meaty. Meaty. Uh, gem store. Mini Frostbite. What do you think? Um, I'm excited. I really like Frostbite. Okay. I don't know if he's worth 400 gems, though. Alright, fair enough. But... Yeah, I'm still really tempted to go get it. Apparently, it's only half as many and twice as lovable. They did the math. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, Shadow Assassin Outfit. It, it's an uh... outfit, which makes me mad, first of all. Oh, for sure. Like if we could still, if we could do the mix and match, it would be so totally awesome. Because I do not like those pants. You don't um, like the weird. Kind of poofy, plumbery, show your butt crack kind of pants. You don't like those? Those don't, those don't do it for you? <laughs> yeah, you have to remember there's no sides to the females with pants. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. But they're fantastic. Um, that was a joke. I think they are. Yeah. But. Uh, my biggest problem is it's just it's so kitschy. Everything has ninja stuff in it. Everything. Like, why do we have ninja stuff? Because it's just, can't the thing, not really, but that's that's the only thing I can think of, is that it's all going to lead up to something to do with Kanta, and that's why we're getting, uh -huh. like, this is, this is very, it's not 100% assassin stuff from Guild Wars 1, because it's, it's not, but it's closer than any of the thief stuff we have, you know, thief themed, and obviously this will work for any armor class, but it, it, it gives me, when I look at it, I think... Guild Wars 1 Assassin. Oh. Uh. But, uh, I don't know, you get a weird kind of common Rider helmet if you're a male character. Kind of weird. Uh, yeah, and tabby socks, I guess, for for the males, it looks like, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not super excited about them. I haven't actually looked at them in-game, though. I've only looked at them in the little image. So, for all right. I know, maybe on, like, a Char or a Norn, or a Char or a Sura, they look amazing. I just I just have to check them out. But first impressions is I, I could live without it, especially I don't feel like blowing 700 gems on that. Um, I did see on Reddit that apparently on the Asura, they look like Power Rangers. Well, that could make me change my mind. I'll be honest. Yeah. No, I don't doubt that they're very well executed. I just... Bing, ding, ding. They just come out of nowhere. It's like, what the hell? Um, yeah. So, uh, well, we'll get some more. There was some interesting data mine stuff, which I haven't checked, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, some of the stuff was old that we missed. All right, let's just go to, first of all, let's talk yeah. about one of the things that, wherever if I can find it, here it is. 
was most excited about is the return of the release page like on release yeah you know like it i feel like i don't know and they they kind of did this before but i feel like this just it felt like home you know mm. like it, it felt good to have this at the launch yeah this, this preview of kind of of everything which is about you know a little bit deeper than this level is what we're going to talk about as far as the patch itself because yeah. we don't want to spoil things um i mean obviously we can talk about the zone in and of itself because we know we're gonna we knew we were gonna be going to a new zone uh we can talk about some of the cool stuff about it but you know we don't want to spoil any of the story so um yeah so i guess first impressions or, or your overall thoughts on this release as a whole what do you think I love it, and I really hope that the rest um, really follow up with the way that this one played out, the way that you um, were able to just carry through the story and whatnot, the way it took you around the new area. Mm -hmm. Kind of let like, you explore it. guided it. you around yeah. the new area. It guided you around like story steps where there's lots of things to read and interact with in the environment. It guided you through them, but in a storytelling way, so that you actually, like, there are still things to see and find that you don't get, that don't get pointed out to you in the narration. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, there's a room, and I swear to God, it was like the old point-and-click games that you used yep. to be able to play, like Monkey Island and such. Yep, the um, yeah. Where it's all like, you know, check this out, and then go talk to me, and then you talk to them, and you discuss it, and then it's all like, then the next clue will be to, like, or the next key will be to go talk to someone else, and, like, it just, I was so engrossed, before I knew it, I had spent, like, two or three hours, and I was like, oh, I should go get supper, <laughs> and Yeah, um, well, let me just kind of give a brief overview of what we have here on this release page. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go through the patch notes because it's basically the same information, just more in-depth, and you can obviously read those if you want. Um, and we'll kind of touch a little bit more in-depth on some of the stuff that Son mentioned. So we know we're going to be going to this new area in the Brisbane Wildlands. We're going to meet up with the Seraph that tell us that basically right in the, the, the release. We saw in the video preview from last week that there's going to be issues with the Zephyrites crashing. Um... The ships are going to go down, and we need to figure out why. So that's another part of more of the premise of why we're going to this new area. Uh, we get to join uh, some of the favorite or not favorite, depending on how you see them. Uh, mm -hmm. The B Iconics, Destiny's Orphans, Destiny's Edge 2.0, whatever you want to call them. Marjorie, Bram, Casimir, Rox, Timey, and Scruffy. Um, so they're going to be there playing a pretty prominent role, so that's exciting if, if that's your style, if you like them. Um, we're going to be encountering a lot of Inquest, which is cool to bring back, you know, a, an enemy. And it makes sense story-wise, and again, we're not going to delve too far into that, but we're basically in yeah. Inquest territory. Yeah, I totally wasn't expecting that when I saw the, the screen or whatever for it. I'm like, Inquest? What the hell? Right. So, uh, you know, and I mean, it, it fits story-wise why we'd be there. And then, again, yeah. um, we'll get more into this, but there's these elite achievements that you can get after you complete the story, and we'll, we'll touch on that after we kind of go through the generalization of everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's some pretty sweet new rewards. And then, again, we'll talk more about some of the rewards and upcoming rewards when we get into the data mining uh, piece here. So, first of all you are going to be heading into Dry Top is the new zone. If you're a fan of Guild Wars 1, you'll know that Dry Top was an outpost that you could go to in Guild Wars 1. And it's pretty much just a transient outpost that you just use to get from one area to the next. Unfortunately, we are still a ways away from that area in our Let's Play videos. Um, we're mm -hmm. getting closer to Krita. But we have to finish the Krita stuff, and then eventually we'll get to Dry Top. So we're, we're a little bit of a ways from there. Um, but you will... Uh, it's not an outpost? I thought it was an outpost. Alu, don't be a jerk. I thought it was an outpost. What is it then, Alu? 
Yeah, what is it? For you, you're holding up the podcast right now. Hmm? Whatever. It's an explorable area, she says. Whatever. We'll see. Even though she's probably right. But we'll see. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this area is is pretty interesting because it has a lot of mechanics and things. Uh, uh, it has a lot of th- mechanics and different aspects that other zones don't have. Um, mm-hmm. They do. You do still have access in different areas to the various Zephyrite. Uh, uh, what's it called? The different Zephyrite uh, aspects, the aspect crystals. Oh yeah. The jumping and the dashing and the lightning jump. Um, yeah, I love how that got incorporated in. That was really uh, fun. And again, story related, they're limited. Like you don't like when you pick one up, you don't have it till you lose it. Like you only have it for a limited amount of time. If you you know it'll just go away, um, which can make exploring both frustrating and more interesting. So I I do like that. Hmm. Um. There's new points of interest, there's new uh, vistas, there's new waypoints, there's also new dynamic events in the area as well, which is makes it feel like a new zone. Mm-hmm. But again, we've also been assured that this isn't the entire zone. There is more to explore. Uh, this yeah. is just what we have access to currently, which again kind of gives you that whole living world feel where we have access to this piece now, but we'll further, we'll push, and we'll get access to more of the zone as, as more goes on. And yeah. and again, they are sticking with the living story strategy, so we are, what is that, 13 days away from the next release? Yeah. So, I mean, pretty soon we'll be continuing on. So, uh, But again, and again, to reiterate what they have mentioned about the story journal, all you have to do is log into the game between now and the next 13 days, and you will have unlocked this story in your story journal to play as much as you want going forward. So even if you can't play it in this time frame, just log in, and once you do, you'll have it unlocked, and then you can quit out, and you'll still be able to come back to this. Otherwise, you'll have to pay 200 gems uh, once it's gone. All right, so back to... um, Back to Dry Top and, and, and the zone. There's a lot of NPC. Mice? Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, internet connection problem. Ah, well, should be okay now. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll be. There's a lot of NPCs there. A lot mm-hmm. of NPCs that are like named NPCs, if you will, like ones that you talk to. And they actually yeah. have dialogue rather than just like, hello, or I have the finest quality goods. Like, they actually have <laughs> things to discuss. Yeah. And the ambient um, conversations are crazy, too. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Anyone? Oh. No spoilers. That's what I'm trying It's not part of the story, but it's part of the NPCs that are down there. And it's not in Prospect Town. But just outside of Prospect Town, and listen, listen to the three of them. It's hel- He is frigging Captain Kirk. Are you talking? Oh, and the, with the Hylic too. That's right outside the town. Yeah, with the Hylic. Yeah. It's a Hylic and a Norn and a male and a male human and the male human. I swear to God, is Captain Kirk. <laughs> He's Captain Kirk. I now I have to. I know the NPCs, but I just kind of ran by them because I was going to do other story related things um but yeah. alicardalina in the chat says it's dark and it is it is it has a it's a very it's it's very guild wars one honestly if you ask me it, it's a much more adult less kind of kid happy-go-lucky even like there was like lion's arch got destroyed but it still felt felt not like that didn't feel dark to me you know right it just like it just happened but this is like we are the nitty gritty of like I lost my family, I lost my friends, this and that, yeah. and then there's like little teaser bits like oh did you hear about this person or how about that this person that blew through town not that long ago and and yada yada it's yeah. like 
there's a lot of stuff there. And there's, like, places where you can explore. There's a new jumping puzzle. There's, um... Diving goggles. There's all sorts of stuff that you can get. And there's two sections of achievements. There's your story-based achievements. And then there's your zone-based achievements. So, like, you mm -hmm. get some just for, like, exploring in the zone. Then when you complete the story, then you can go back in and replay any of the story in any order that you wish to get these kind of elite achievements. For. And that's... Uh, you do get rewards, too, which I wasn't expecting for that. Um... Yeah, well, the, yeah, the story ones you get rewards for. Um, the other ones you don't, but I also think that the other ones are not time-gated either. I don't think any of them are time-gated. Yeah, the zone ones definitely are not. Well, what I meant is completing the steps of the personal story, or of the living story, rather. Each step yeah. you complete, you get that, like, ch -ch -ch living story, yeah. you know, personal story kind of reward box that you normally get for your personal story. Um, yeah. But... The achievements that after you beat uh, the personal story story content and go back in to get the elite achievements, each elite achievement has uh, rewards associated with it as well. Sort of like the meta achievements had before, like when you complete the achievement, then you get like a little daily chest that pops up. Oh, I didn't notice. Each one okay. of them has each elite achievement has rewards associated with it as well aside from achievement points again it's lesser achievements that uh, rewards like um like champ bags and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, that you would get that you get like for doing the personal story and mm -hmm. I, I guess that's a good a segue as any into there's like new um currencies almost i guess you could say in uh in this area alone, there's the geodes that you can find. And, like, you yeah. trade those to various NPCs for certain things. Um, well, the NPCs that you use that for, there's a couple of them, but they sell the same thing. But the price and selection uh, varies depending on that meta group event for the map um, called the Zephyrite's Favor. Mm-hmm. And so what it is, is as in between the sandstorms, so when the sandstorms hit, you're, you're locked into that tier and you can't win any more favor, as far as I understood from the short time I played it. Um, but when the sandstorm is gone, everyone does as many events as they can. Mm -hmm. And when you complete those events, you win favor of the Zephyrite. And you go up tiers. And as you go through the tiers, you unlock um, more things that you can buy. Like, tier 1 has very little that you can buy versus tier 2. Tier 2, 3, and 4 have all the same items, but the price is dramatically different. So a stack of 5 of something at tier 2 is more expensive than the same stack at tier 4. Okay. Yeah, I, I had only ever seen tier 2. That's as far as it had got, because yeah. I got, like patch notes or patches in came in so i had to leave um but yeah you can trade the geode you can get like zephyrite lock picks which again kind of harkens back to guild wars one with lock picks that you can use i like that i do too and you can use them to only open like the special lock chests which you can only yeah. find in a sandstorm which again i guess we should explain that there are sandstorms yeah um I love the way that this map plays with visibility, because the, the mine is pitch black, and those sandstorms, like, I have run off of so many cliffs in a sandstorm, it's mm -hmm. literally like, whoa, apparently there was a cliff there! Huh. It's great, I love it. Sorry, I got, I got a message from Jal, and it says, I don't know if you saw this, and it's from Guild Wars 2, it's on their Twitter, but that's on their Flickr account, and it says... As we approach the battlegrounds, we've stopped conversing about anything non-essential to our survival. We're too exhausted to do anything plod onward. It's as if the wind, sun, and weather were conspiring to slow our progress. That's... Um, as, yeah, that's in-game. Yeah, there's a... That, well, they put it up there, too, but it is... Uh, a scrap of paper you can find in game, but this is a reference from the Zephyrite. So that's 
Ah, the story. Oh, the story's so good. Um, it's so awesome! There's like, what did you say, maybe like six or seven different like little instances, something like that, uh, of different parts of the of this episode of the story? Uh, there's gotta be more than seven. Well, let's just use seven, even if, even if it is more. Yeah. Um, because it takes place in a new zone, like, it took me probably a good two to three hours to complete this. And yeah. now, if I just sat down and just p banged out the story as it, like, it probably would have taken me less time. Oh, yeah, like, the the content of the story itself is maybe an hour's play, but because you're in a new zone and you keep getting distracted, because it's like, ooh, and this, and ooh, and that, and yeah. Exactly. Um, it, uh, and, and Jal says the battlefield part of the message is the most interesting part, kind of confirms they were ready for battle. Mordremoth, maybe. As we approach the battlegrounds, uh, I don't believe that's the case because there is another scrap of paper somewhere else that sort of alludes to um, that this is... And, and again, it fits with some of the old Zephyrite stuff from way back. Um, the last time the Zephyrites came around, there was that blog post and the end of, uh, Des of Edge of Destiny, the book. Um, that makes me think that this is in reference to something that happened in the past. And some of you may know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to go any further into that. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a lot of really good, good lore-related stuff, and that you may want to look into uh, any kind of lore things that you can find about this whole area and what's going on, because there is a lot of information there. Um, again, you're, you're searching for... Um, lost coins, which sometimes some of them are only visible in the sandstorm. Again, the treasure chests are only visible in the landstorm and can be only opened with the lockpicks. Um, uh, treasure chests aren't only visible in the sandstorm. I thought they said that they were. In like, I m maybe they're not, but in the uh, like on I the description of the, or maybe that was just for the achievement. Maybe. I thought that I had seen some that were not in the. I thought that's what the lockpick description said, like, for opening chests that are found in sandstorms or something. I don't know. I don't know. I only played for a few hours, so that's all the time I got. Okay. Well, I mean, either way, I only played last night a little bit as well. But um, there's lots of little, again, hidden kind of quirks and things. If you talk to the different NPCs, you'll learn a lot of interesting stuff. Um... There's... A lot of the NPC dialogue, mm -hmm. especially within the stories, on the story instances, varies depending on your personal story. And this was confirmed on Reddit, but I forgot to save you the link, and it's full of spoilers anyways. But um, they will talk to you differently depending on your profession and or race. Okay. Uh, Alucard Which Lena. I think is. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I just said that was awesome. It is, and I did notice that myself because it was kind of going off in guild chat as it was happening. I saw people were mentioning that as well. Mm. Um, and Alucard Alina confirmed. Well, we lost the stream again. That's the second time. <sighs> well, anyway, you don't have your video up anyway. Oh, bugger. Uh, anyhow, hey, there we go. Um, anyway, uh, there's a lot of, you, you learn a little bit of backstory regarding the various, uh, members of Destiny's Edge 2.0, you learn a lot of other mm -hmm. interesting story about where things are going and, and why perhaps mm -hmm. some things happened the way they did and, and why they did. So it's very interesting, and it does also leave a lot more questions that makes you want to continue to explore and know what else is going to happen. Yeah, questions like, no, you failed to explain that very well so much as, like, inspiring you to want to know more. Exactly. Because so, I, I think a lot of the time in 
in Living Story 1, we were left with questions because things just weren't properly explained. Yeah. Like, not, I want to know more. It, I want to understand what you, you just said something that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else do we have? That's pretty much it, I think, for as far as general kind of overview stuff without really spoiling things. I don't think there's much else we can talk about other than, like, there's, again, some new kind of, like, bags you can open. They added a new, um, armor configuration, Nomad's armor, which I think yeah. is toughness, vitality, healing power, I believe. Yeah. So that's pretty good if you want to make a super tanky character, because you've got, uh, and toughness is the major stat, so. Yeah, toughness, I don't think, is major for many combinations, so just, that's nice. Just knights, I believe, but. Yeah. Um, you have this thing in here you said proof. Oh, that was my, Okay. We're very certain that, or at least my theory when I was playing it, because it's such a small area, my theory was that we are going to spend a lot of this living uh, world season. I think that this living world season will probably only introduce one, maybe two maps. Um, so uh, we're going to spend like a good half of this season exploring the dry top. Just unlocking uh, little areas of the map, much like like we have unlocked Prospect Valley, pretty much. Um, and so the next one will be unlocking a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until the entire map is actually unlocked. Which, uh, when you talk about it, it sounds like we're almost being skimmed, but I think it's good because it's like we're just we're following the plot into the map. Instead of having this huge map to get lost in, especially because it is a very vertically inclined map. So there's a lot to do in a very tiny space. Because if you look on the map, mm -hmm. like on the world map, it is a tiny space. But it certainly doesn't feel like that when you're there. Right. And um, I remember from one of the ready ups or something like that, or articles, where they talk, like, a lot of time goes into building maps. Like, ideally speaking, they want to give it almost a whole year to developing a map to make sure all the glitches are out, that everything lines up right, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of labor goes into these maps. So if you just unveil them all at once, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you're kind of like, no, what, what do we release for the rest of the season? Like, right. So, yeah. No, it's I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'd kind of have been taking a break from Guild Wars just because that's kind of how things had worked out. Just because mm -hmm. we didn't have any new content, and you know, the, the podcast was kind of getting stagnant. There wasn't a lot to talk about, and uh, this definitely reinvigorated me because there's lore and there's story, and that's exciting. <gasps> there's so much. Yeah. I really hope that I can attend the next one, the next podcast, so that I can talk about all the things. We can talk about all the things then, because then it won't be spoilers, because everyone probably should have played by then. Yeah, I mean, at, at a full week's, a week and a half almost worth of time. I mean, yeah. even two days, I don't mind spoiling, but but one day is short. That's yeah. That's barely any time. So, I mean, we oh, yeah. barely even played at all. Yeah, I only got to play because of the fact that it was kind of the day. Yeah. So, um, all right, well, I think you know what time it is. What time is it? It's data mining time. Somewhere is a thing. Somewhere. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> data mining time. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, as per usual, the Reddit guru himself, data mining expert, that shaman, I uh, will link with the link. I haven't actually gone in game to see these, but there are chat codes for a lot of these. Um, there are the Adventurer's Mantle, Scarf, and Spectacles, which we kind of got a preview of, and he put up earlier, which is like a dust kind of bandana going around your face, a pair of goggles, and apparently you can combine them together to make them all into one, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool, and that's again for 
all three uh, armor classes. Um, then there is this interesting thing, crafted armor in the style of the famous Ventar pacifist Ventari. And then you've got Ventari's, you know, basically the armor sets for all three armor types. Yeah, they're new Ascended, aren't they? I believe so. So I don't know if the, uh, I don't know if the color, I'm assuming the color may change, possibly, be different. I think I, I think I saw it. Okay. I saw this, and it's like greenish. But you know I what? I can't remember where I saw it. It might just be green because the, um, knight's quality armor, the, uh, toughness first is green. Yeah. So that's probably it. Okay. Um... I don't know, but I'd have to check. It wasn't like a rich green, it was like a slightly muddy green. Yeah. Uh, Nomad's armor chest, double click to unpack a full set of level 80 armor, satchel of Nomad's exalted armor, then there's the weapons, Ventari's blades, yada yada yada. Uh, I think I saw somewhere in here something about... Oh, here you go, iron greatsword. It's a... Uh, Costumes and skins. I'm guessing it might be a gem store purchase, but Belinda Delacqua's or Del Delacroix rather's sword, um, like the big two-handed katana that she wields, which is awesome. And again, kind of sticking with that whole Canthan, them being of Canthan descent thing. Hmm. So, what did you think about that? Because it was kind of a shocker to see like this whole new sword design. Um, I didn't realize that the Delacroix were Canthan. Oh, okay. So I was all like, we have ninjas, and now we have a freaky ninja sword. Oh. Neither of which have any context in the game, other than they're here. Well, they do. That That is referenced in a few situations that she, they are of Canthan descent. Kind of explains mm. the, the way they look a little bit as well, but yes. Which makes sense, that she would have a sword like that, but again, I'm really more and more starting to think, getting my hopes up, which I don't want to do, mm -hmm. that we may be getting Cantha. And and it wouldn't potatoes put this theory out there that that's going to be the announcement for the two-year anniversary of the game, that we're going to Cantha in some form of expansion, whether it be Living World or a box expansion, and I'm starting to agree right. with that. Um, and then again, there's new recipes because they added cactus as a new cooking ingredient. So right. there's that. A whole bunch of new recipes to go along with that. Uh, and there's also ambrite, which is the new kind of gemstone that you use to craft the new trinkets. Yeah, well, you you find all these lumps and whatnot, and um. There's another thing about something you pick up that I need to remember to point out. Um, but you get these lumps, and they're actually a salvable, salvageable item, and you mm -hmm. have to salvage them to get your actual umbrite. Right. Um, and the only other thing that was kind of new that they have in uh, there was like they we know we got mini frostbite. The only other things mm -hmm. that are in there are mini llama and mini steam minotaur. Um, hmm. And Llama previously, I think, was only accessible through the Tournament of Legends. The mini Llama, okay. anyway. Just like the Llama finisher was originally only attainable through the Tournament of Legends. But maybe now that we actually are in a zone that has Llamas, which answers a question from <laughs> last week, or the week before, which, do you think Llamas will actually ever appear in the game? Apparently the answer is yes. <laughs> They're all over. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's a legendary llama too. I think that's somewhere a, in the map. Yeah, I think that's actually one of the achievements. Oh yeah. To find the legendary llama. I think so. Uh, what was that? Oh, nothing important. Um, and then the only other thing that was interesting is. Under miscellaneous, there was a line that says, increase your world v. world skills faster. Huh. Whatever, I don't know what that is. But everything else is pretty much information we already got, so... 
must be an XP boost for World v. World. But we, we already have one. That's what I'm saying. It's, uh, we already have that, so I don't know what it would be. Um. Yeah. So, that's it for data mined information. Um. The last thing that we have is. Oh, the, oh. oh. Um, for anyone, because I had to be told this by Brahms, because apparently I can't read. Uh, when you're out fighting mobs and stuff in Dry Top, you will find that you keep picking up a lot of silky sand. Mm -hmm. Double click on your silky sand, because apparently it gets consumed in stacks of ten to, I don't know, you find items. Yeah, it them. gives you items. So, which I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really cool, uh, useless trophy item method of dealing with it. Yeah, but. and I'm not exactly sure. I think you can get some actually some rare stuff out of it too, but I'm not sure. Hmm. All I've gotten is a lock pipe and umbre. So. Yeah. Yeah, me too. But all right, so then we've got the craft corner that someone picked out. I will post this here. This is from. Chiana? Which is that how you would say it? On yeah. DeviantArt? Chiana. Chiana. So, uh, this is in Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh. Uh, Senorita Miss Gris. Yeah. Miss Linda. Yep, so. Son's the artist, she picked the craft corner. Boom. Yes. Duns. I like it. It's simple. It's yeah. pretty. It's still very accurate. Mm hmm So. Yeah. And, uh, do you... Oh. Well, I think the computer decided to really get revving up there for a second. Um, do you have anything else that you want to talk about? If not, we will close this out. No, I, I'm done. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you for coming out for the 102nd episode of the Chronicles of Tyria podcast. I'm Lagwin. And I'm Son. We will see you next time. <laughs>